During the 2000s, Blender pulled off something pretty unusual, especially for open source software. It gave artists a built-in, node-based compositor. If you've been around long enough, you remember what a big deal this was. Most 3D software didn't have a built-in compositor, so you had to rely on separate programs, like After Effects, Nuke, or Fusion. Blender made it possible to render and finish everything in one place. And because the compositor was node-based, I mean from the start, it gave people a lot of flexibility for setting up reusable effects and experimenting really quickly. Blender broke that pattern in 2005. You could render an image, then stay inside the same software to add a glow, fix some depth of field, or tweak color levels. For a free tool, it felt powerful, and for small studios and hobbyists, it was liberating. Suddenly, you didn't need to buy expensive licenses or juggle multiple applications, and Blender's compositor lets you do all that in one place. For a while, this was enough to make Blender feel ahead of the curve. The open movies Blender produced around that time, like Elephant's Dream, leaned on it heavily, and the results proved that the compositor wasn't just an afterthought, it was a real part of the production pipeline. But as with many Blender features, the early momentum didn't last forever, or did it?